It's impossible to talk about the commons without also talking about the constant systematic threat to them by market forces. This threat of imposing a market order on commons is called enclosure. It's all about privatizing the things that we once shared, commodifying them and putting price tags on them so that they can be bought and sold in the marketplace. This is one of the great unacknowledged trends of our time the marketization of everything. It's harmful because it undermines the social connections and cultural identities that we have with each other. To talk about enclosure is to open up a conversation that standard economics rarely entertains, the dispossession of commoners as market forces seize possession of their collective resources, often with the active collaboration of government. The language of enclosure makes visible the antisocial, anti-environmental effects of so-called free markets, and it points to commoning as an often effective, appropriate alternative. Enclosures of the commons are an everyday fact of life in our modern global economy. Capital-driven markets have become so powerful that they're disrupting natural ecosystems, causing mass migrations, and claiming ownership over life forms. One-fifth of the human genome is now privately owned as patents, for example. Multinational water companies are constantly buying up groundwater supplies throughout the world to convert them into proprietary branded bottled water and other beverages. McDonald's now owns a trademark over restaurants with the word Mick before it, so that you can't call your restaurant McSushi or McVegan. Enclosure is always cast as a necessary step in wealth creation and development, but as the past several decades have shown, it's more often a simple act of dispossession. That which was once shared by all is turned into private property. Commoners are unable to continue to meet their needs through non-market forms of self-provisioning and sharing when enclosure occurs. They have to become employees and consumers in the global market as a condition for their so-called development. There's a great protest poem from the 18th century that sums up the dynamics of enclosure nicely. It goes, the law locks up the man or woman who steals the goose from off the common, but leaves the greater villain loose who steals the common from off the goose. Enclosure is bad because it substitutes market exchange, the circulation of money, as the primary force for organizing society. Enclosures liquidate the coherence of society as an organic whole in our social relationships and community relationships by putting a price tag on everything. And this breaks commons down into its constituents' parts. We have labor, land, and social life all of them treated as commodities whose, I, whose a value is considered identical with their price. Needless to say, this is profoundly destructive. Now, the prevalence of market enclosures in our times might lead you to think that markets and commons are fated to be eternal enemies. This is not entirely so, I think. I believe that while there are serious tensions between markets and commons as way to, ways to organize production and social life, there are ways that markets and commons can play nicely together, so to speak. But this is a complicated challenge because it requires that commons be capable of protecting themselves from markets and from the powerful system of private property rights and state support. The commons must have mechanisms of law, technology, or social organization to prevent markets from simply appropriating shared resources through enclosure. In English history, many commoners had a tradition of beating the bounds. This was an annual community party in which everyone walked the perimeter of their commons to identify any fences or hedges that had been put up to privatize the commons. Then, the community knocked them down and reclaiming the integrity of their commons. And that's essentially what needs to be done today. We need to reinvent the tradition of beating the bounds. Two successful examples in the digital world 
are the general public license for free and open source software and the Creative Commons licenses for creative works. These licenses are based on a person's copyright ownership and allow commoners to retain control over the fruits of their shared la labor by prohibiting private appropriations of code and digital content. Essentially, it allows the commons to be protected. The same idea of beating the bounds occurs when commoners devise formal rules and ethical norms to preserve their commons. It's a way of excluding outsiders who haven't invested their own energies in cultivating the commons, who haven't beat the, beat the bounds, and who may wish to act as free riders or vandals instead. The basic goal is to ensure that commoners can protect and reproduce the commons, because the commons has to have within its very structure the capacity to assure its own longevity and self-protection. If it has these capacities, then it can more safely engage with markets, knowing that the daunting power of finance capital, private property, the state, and markets won't overwhelm it. Of course, many commoners are starting to realize that the best strategic approach may be less about fighting capital directly or about negotiating with corporations to respect the commons than about building new sorts of market structures that they control themselves, that is, cooperatives. There's a huge potential for blending the rich knowledge and practices of the cooperative movement with commons. But this will require some artful negotiations between the ethic of the market and the ethic of commoners. Many co-ops have become so immersed in conventional markets that they are chiefly concerned with their members and have less focus on the common good. Yet commons have precisely the opposite problem. A great deal of interest in the common good and the non-market sharing of resources, but few financial or institutional resources to grow. So I think that the future will see some interesting experiments in trying to blend market-based expertise of cooperatives with the non-market dynamics of commons.